I am so excited to be bringing a new project onto the channel, guys. Something that I've never done, that I've never showed on the channel, and not even much of this realm have I shared with you guys. Some of you might know, those who have been watching the little tidbits from the vlogs here and there, and watching videos from way back, I've been playing music, and music was a bit of, big part of my life ever since I was a kid. Uh, I, when I was 12 years old, I started playing regularly in my local church, playing the drums. Uh, I've played guitar in church off and on, and I played, for a lot of years, played bass in church. Uh, various churches throughout the province, playing drums and bass. Piano, I've always just picked that a little bit. I've never really learned to play the piano. I believe my parents bought me a keyboard at one point when I was younger, and I played with it for a little bit. I always had an interest. I always picked at the Baby Grand at the at the local church. I still do now. Uh, a lot of times when I go into our church down there, I'll I'll pluck a few keys on the piano because I just love it. I love it. Something draws me to it. But pianos are big. Pianos are expensive. They're hard to get. And I was really happy with my little keyboard until I went and tried the few things I learned on the church's Baby Grand and felt those weighted keys and oh, it's just something special. So, let's bring all that around. This, just a couple weeks ago, I started hunting for an upright piano. I got the urge, I got the itch. Uh, it happens to me a lot with different types of things. And I decided I wanted an upright piano, both for me to learn on and enjoy, both for my household, just to, to build more memories, and I want that for my girls, because uh, I want them to be able to learn the piano. I already have the guitar and the bass and the drums and the mics and the recording gear and, and all of those opportunities for them. But a piano is one, I think, one of the best instruments a child can learn. It's a, it's a beautiful way to learn, to learn music in general. And I've found that once you learn one instrument, all the other instruments become fairly easy to learn. You still have to learn the hand skills and the actual tactics, but the theory behind it is all the same. So that's the reason why I really wanted a piano for our house. And uh, I scored this beauty just just earlier this week. So I struggled, got managed to get this in the truck, me and a couple other fellows at, uh, at the site where I bought it. I got it for a cheap price and I got it in the truck. I didn't ex inspect it. Nothing like that because I got it for a cheap enough price and the guy gave me a deal. I didn't want to go picking at it. But I brought home this Kimball Artist Console. Kimball would be the brand name. They were probably the most popular manufacturer, piano manufacturer in the world, at least for a long time. They made more pianos, especially during the war era, war era than any other maker. They weren't considered a, a high-end maker like Steinway and Baldwin and Bosendorfer and those different other names that are just known for their outstanding quality. But Kimball would have been like a household name. It would have been the household standard. and. Uh, and this is a, just a beautiful rendition of it, in my opinion. The artist console here, that would refer to the style of piano. So it means it's an upright piano, it refers to the way the action is set up inside. And the height here, you notice it's not a player's piano with a real tall back. It's not a spinet, which would be much lower piano. It's an artist console, so that refers to the way it's strung, the action, and the size of it, just the way it's laid out here. Now, although we have a complete piano, for its age, which I believe is roughly, I'm thinking it was built mid-70s, that's, that's as far as I can tell. For its age, it's in exceptionally good condition, and it's all here. I'm guessing this piano lamp probably came with it back in the day, I don't know. This bench here, notice the matching leg engravings, it is the matching bench that was bought with the piano. So that gives me an idea that this was well taken care of. Nothing speed up, everything is, everything is there, prim and proper. One thing I can tell is this piano hasn't been serviced or professionally done in a long time. 
and there are a few issues. Let me just run over what we have here. Now, in terms of the internal components, all the stuff in here, there's not much I can do with it, and there's not much the common man can do with it. It's something you need an experienced, uh, a professional to deal with. So I've already talked to a professional. We're going to see about getting this piano professionally tuned. Uh, he used a whole bunch of words, voicing and regulation and, and other kinds of stuff, which I don't know anything about, but hopefully we can get him to explain some of that stuff to us. And he's going to have this piano hopefully running tip-top in the near future. So I'm really excited to get that on camera for you guys, just to share this whole experience as I'm learning it. Outside of needing those mechanical and pliability issues addressed, the biggest issue is the finish on the piano. Of course, being... 30, 40, 50 years old, it's been worn, it's been touched up in different places, I'll show you here, and poorly touched up. Uh, a lot of the components are, are dry and creaky and just a little rough. Um, some things are a little bit sloppy here. Um, this piece needs to be addressed, we've got some bad piping there. The piano has some beautiful brass components which you guys know I love brass and I love polished brass but they are far from polished at this point heavy tarnish um, and just in general the color this was very traditional color at the time so sort of that chestnut brown and I, I really don't like it let me tell you before you guys start freaking out about this being an all original piano and stuff I thought really hard when I got when I got it home and I inspected it and saw the condition how original it was I said, there's no way that I can strip this piano. The more I looked at it and thought about how I don't like the color and how it's roughed up and stuff, I made the decision that it is my intention to strip it and recolor it. We'll get to the color later on. But that is my intention, is to completely refinish this piano. And I am, <laughs> I am so excited. Uh, let's take a look inside here. Let me give you an idea first. Again, I'm not a piano player. But let me give you an idea of what it sounds like right now. So I've already compared the pitch of the piano to standard tuning, and it is the whole piano is down in tune. So um, the professional, when he comes, will bring the piano up to tune. fairly in tune with itself. Anyone with a musical ear will hear definitely that it's out. But everything works. Everything's here. It's in half decent tuning like someone could buy this cheap piano stick it in their house and and have years of enjoyment out of it but I'm so excited to get this project started. Let me show you guys here under this cover. Just look at the original badging here. Just look at this. And I will not be changing the inside color here and will not be staining the inside of this cover. Just look at that. Now from my reading, my study, so here are your strings. Here are your hammers. So you see that, you press a key the hammers go forward, little felt ends, and they strike the strings. They make the strings ring. The combined tensile force, when all these strings are in tune, the entire tensile force on the back plate here is roughly 20 tons, 40,000 pounds of draw pressure. So that's why you have a massive, massive back plate here, and uh, it just fascinates me. Oh cool, I 
could just, I don't know, when I get this piano done, I might just leave it in the house with this wide open because it looks so beautiful. So beautiful. Now the piano is dirty inside. I, I don't know if it's been cleaned out since it's been new. There's, there's cakes of dust on the bottom here and, and some of the keys stick just, I think this has to do with maybe regulation. I think that one was regulation where it just refers to, don't quote me on this, refers to how well all the mechanisms work. Some of these hammers touch each other, which is not supposed to be. So when you press the keys, the friction stops them from coming back. So the hammer stays in like this, which is, again, not supposed to be the case. So hopefully we'll get everything. I'm going to clean everything, clean everything well inside. There are some components like this that just could be oiled and run smoother. But uh, if everything works out like I want to, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. But if it works out like I have it in my mind, I'm going to have a beautiful piece here that I think my family will use and cherish for, for potentially decades. What I'm going to start with, as much as I want to dive right into this now and start breaking it down, I've got to know if my plan of stripping it is going to work. I've got the bench here which is finished with the same same stain, the same lacquer and everything as the piano is. This is going to be my test piece starting off to see how well the stripper is going to work. Okay, so this is my test piece. With an instrument like a piano, some surfaces are solid hardwood. Uh, I believe walnut in this case. I can't remember what the label said there now. Some surfaces are veneered. I can see that some surfaces are a thick eighth inch veneer. Some are like very thin. So sanding with the orbital sander is not a good option because uh, once you break through that veneer, mm, you've got trouble. My goal is to strip it. As far as I can tell, that is the solution. Um, I did some digging around. This seemed to be like a good option. It's a Circa 1850 brand. There are several different types that they have. This seemed like the best one. It's biodegradable. Um, it's not supposed to smell overly bad, but it's supposed to be quite effective from, from my reading and study. So I'm going to give it a try. I see people spreading it on with brushes. I have a foam brush here. I'm kind of expecting um, the foam brush just to get dissolved. But I'll give it a try. These gloves probably aren't ideal either, but they will separate me at least briefly <laughs> from the chemicals. So. Although it fits biodegradable, I don't see any warning. Do not get an eyes on skin. Wear protective gloves and safety glasses. Yeah, I'll throw, in some, throw on some glasses just for what it takes. I have never used stripper before. So this is my test piece. If stripper works well, the piano, especially down around the legs, has a lot of like uh, little awkward crevices and stuff, like like the bench we just took apart there. A lot of little crevices. So I'm really hoping the stripper works so I don't have to sand in all those little crevices. Yeah, so it's kind of kind of dissolving, messing up my brush there. But did well for the moment. Wait at least 15 minutes for the finish to bubble or dissolve. So I guess we'll just watch and wait. See if this can handle. They had some heavier grade stuff there. I think that was sort of a, a light to medium use. I didn't want to go with like the heavy stripper because it's something delicate like a piano. We'll see. We'll just we'll, we'll wait. Okay, just because I seem to be struggling with patience here today without filming and without waiting 
any suitable length of time. I waited maybe two or three minutes and I just tried scraping it and I could not believe that I scraped off like a putty knife full of gunk. That's what I've just scraped off of there just after a couple of minutes. I don't know if I had to wait longer, if it would have went better. What I'm going to do though, and what I've seen some people do, is a combination of steel wool and a stripper. So I'm just going to put some back onto the piece, use some steel wool, because that's the only way I can get down in those, those uh, deep routed crevices there as well. So. This is pleasant so it has a the smells a little bit strong I can't imagine what uh, what the other stuff must be like if this is supposed to be a pleasant odor stuff the main thing is that we get the clear coat off so that we can restain that is the goal here. Wow. Look at that color. Test of impatience number two. Go with a heavier coat like I see on, uh, on videos. Now I'll leave it alone for an actual period of time. So you can see that color. I'll try to throw up a little something there now to show a comparison because it's still fairly dark, but uh, it's a lot lighter than it was. I'll try to show up, some, show up something that'll show you a little comparison, but uh, I think it's looking pretty good. If you guys have any tips or advice there now on how to do a little bit better, I'm wondering if I should have went with the heavier, stronger stripper, if maybe that just wasn't strong enough, but I'll, get, I'll try giving it a sand once it dries out. It's still damp yet. I've wiped it down with some Virasol after I, I did some scraping and stuff. So I'm hoping I can do some good sanding after and really clean it up to the point of stain. I don't know if that stain is going to do it. I want this finish. I'll try to find a picture there now. I want this finish to be like really black, really dark. And I don't know if a stain is going to do it like that. But then a paint is not what I'm looking for either because a paint can detach from the wood and a paint is uh, it'll cover up any grain character or anything like that and I don't want that I'm not sure what I'm looking for to get the color I want 
because I, I, after brushing that bit of stain on the first piece where we did that test, it really didn't do a whole lot, and I want it to be almost a black finish with a with like a satin or or a or a matte type, more of, more of a satin texture. So we'll see. Uh, this was a test, and I'm happy with it. Regardless, even if I was just going to get this color and keep it here, I would still strip the whole piano because, in my opinion, this is a nicer color than the piano is. And at least this is a nice matte consistent texture instead of the patchy varnishy like thick enamel gloss that's on the piano there now. So make sure you hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Give me some tips below or tell me what you think I should do, what direction I should go. I have some ideas and plans already, but uh, I'm always open to change. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if it's your first time here. And I appreciate you tuning in for the next video.